Hey everyone, it's Darcy from My Three Boy Variants, and I'm whispering because it's absurdly late at night and everyone in my house is sleeping. So um, I really hope the sound on this works and that you can all hear me. So um, today I want to talk about um, recovering an overexposed picture. Let's say that you have an expression on one of the faces. Um, but you were shooting too slow or your ISO is too high or um, whatever the case, you blew it, literally. So we're going to see um, how we can fix that. I am in Adobe Bridge uh, CS5 and um, I am going to open this up and start in um, ACR. Okay, so we're going to select the image that we want to work at, with here and we're going to click open in camera raw. I'm going to give the nice machine a little bit of time here. So what you're going to see here is the camera raw dialog box and um, we're going to play right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this exposure button and we're going to bring it way, 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 way down. And already it's starting to look pretty good. There's a couple hot spots in there that we're going to have to, to work with that might not be recoverable. But it looks like we were almost a full two stops. Um, let me pull it back just a little bit more. Yeah, it looks like we were full two stops um, overexposed. So this next uh, slider here is called recovery. And what recovery will do is try to see this part right here where, um, where it's clipped. We're going to try to um, bring some of that back. And you can watch what's happening um, as I slide it, as I bring it over it will show you, if I bring it to 100%, it'll show you a couple spots that it can't repair. That is, it cannot repair this area right here on her cheek. It cannot repair right here behind his head. And it cannot repair the blown out stuff on baby's outfit. And a couple of the things there. So what we want to do is we want to bring this back so it looks a little bit more natural. Um, we can try, and I will show you how to fix the skin on her face. Um, that's not in recovery, but I really liked um, the expression here on this guy right here. So, okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to bring um, up the fillet just a little bit here. And I can show you by swinging that what that's doing. It's just bringing in the midtones here. So I just want to bring them up just a little bit to help balance that out. And of course, I want to bring up the blacks. So you can see what that's doing as well. It's adding contrast here. I'm going to pull the fill light back just a little bit. So um, our recovery is at about 45 right now. We pulled our exposure down by 2. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is try to play with the color balance here, the, um, the temperature. Right now it's at 5800 degrees Kelvin. I'm going to see what happens when I pull this either direction. What I'm looking for is the color of his um, sweater. So I think it's probably good. I'm pull down some of the magenta until it looks about right. Okay. Um, now things like brightness and contrast I can play with in Photoshop. Once we've recovered it as much as we can do here in ACR, um, we can go ahead and click open image and the image will open up in Photoshop. This is nice and speedy, isn't it? <laughs> I have so many raw files on my computer. My computer's creaking and groaning right now. Okay, so already it looks so much better than it did. Um, immediately. And now's a good time for me to say that um, in order for you to get the kind of results that that I was able to get, it's um, those kind of results are really mostly, or I should say better possible when you are working with a raw file instead of a JPEG. Uh, when you pull things back in JPEG it looks kind of wonky, like it doesn't quite recover the way this does. So, Alright, let's go ahead and blow this up so we can take a, a peek at that part on her cheek. Now, whoops. Um, it's not likely that if this were the photo that I were going to use that I would probably keep um, this part of it, but um, it's a perfectly good example for me to show you how to fix it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to layers 
and we're going to click create a new layer which is going to make this empty box layer one and in our color palette here we're going to click on the color of skin near um, but not on the blown out highlights right there and we're going to go ahead and click OK we're going to get a very soft brush you can pick which one you don't want the one with the hard round circle you want the one with the soft brush right here um, I'm going to go ahead and click one of those and bring my slider down just a little bit again if you want to um, play with the keyboard shortcuts for your brush you can hit um, the bracket keys next to the P to bring them down and up so um, once you've figured out what you want to do we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the opacity and we're going to bring it ro way down like 20 percent and then we're going to take the flow and pull that way back to maybe 15 percent um, and using the skin color here on top with our brush we're going to lightly paint right on there on her nose as well and then I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller so I can go and close underneath her eyes we're just going to lightly try to fill in um, where that hot spot pixels were um, I'm going to change my brush color now and try to get some of this darker color here let's see there we go so when I try to match down here it's a little bit closer to what she's already got going on and match the color of her nose here again you click near the part of the photo that you want to repair that looks good but not on it and then you lightly go ahead and paint with um, pixel colors that are similar uh, there's a little bit of shadow here so we want to go um, and try to get this part matched good and we're gonna paint a little bit here Let's match these colors right underneath here lightly again just keep grabbing colors that are close to but not on the color that you want to fix and lightly now I can show you what happens this is our layer here if we go to this eye it'll say indicate layer visibility if we turn it off you can see what's happening to her skin the blown out section is showing and then you could see where we've lightly painted it on again you want to keep the opacity very very low so that when you go back it's much more natural um, as far as um, this area right here on his hair let's go ahead and take a peek at that again we're at 200 percent here so um, this area here and this area here uh, there's two different ways to do it I think the best way is probably to clone it so we're going to cl click on the back background layer and we're going to click right here on, on the clone with a soft brush um, and again we're going to pick um, an area, a target area near and um, you hold down the alt or option key and it's going to make it into a target and you're going to take a uh, click with your mouse sample and then you're going to create a new layer so that this can be on its own layer and you're simply just going to brush naturally right over that take a new sample you need to go on to the background layer to get a sample and then back up to our working layer so it can kind of blend back to the background layer to get a sample we don't want to clone it exactly right next to it um, otherwise it'll look kind of strange so we'll go ahead and do that uh, and then when you back up you can see that the hair there is not nearly you can see it's kind of covered up so our eye doesn't go to it and now let's work on this one right here so again we'll work it at 200% uh, we're gonna um, get a target area hold down alt or the option key to get a sample of good hair go to our hair layer here and go ahead and click paint right over that and then you can see now that those layers are, are gone. So let's move back out. Um, as far as this area back here, uh, it's very easy to do with, again, with cloning, or um, you can try the Content Aware Fill, and we can see if that works. Content Aware Fill is a feature that's only available in Adobe 
uh, CS5. So if you have a lower um, area, I can show you how to do it. First, let's um, go take a snapshot. Go up to here to the history uh, palette, click the camera, and that's going to take a snapshot of how far we are right now so we can compare the difference. We're going to grab our lasso tool right here, and we're going to grab this super distracting part right above his head, just like that, and we're going to hit the delete key um, on our keyboard. This dialog box will come up and it'll say use content aware fill. We'll say okay, let's do it and let's see if it can fix it. Sometimes it does a good job right out of the bat and sometimes it grabs, as you can see, it grabs some of the other stuff that, um, that didn't quite work. But it was a pretty good first try. You can see here um, if we go back to our history, what, it, what it's done from that to that. So um, I would say that uh, probably for me this isn't acceptable but sometimes you can take little areas like this select them with the lasso and hit d delete and do the content aware fill again and sometimes by doing smaller sections like this um, we're doing a greater feather like here it's only five pixels let's try if we did a 10 pixel feather um, maybe making it a little bit easier for uh, Photoshop to do it in smaller chunks and sometimes it does a pretty good job and sometimes you really need to kind of um, play with it and clone it. The one thing that I like about the content aware fill is it has an, al an algorithm of randomness so that you're never really just creating anything like it. So um, at this point probably what I do is uh, go to the patch tool now that we've got the lighting sort of the way we want it drag the sort of offensive area that you want to get rid of and slide it over here so it's picking up sort of similar texture like that and again that's the patch tool and there you go there's a little bit of roughness around the edges here go to 100 percent you can see um, that would need some fine tuning but for the purpose of this tutorial which only lets me do five minutes um, I can show you so again let's go ahead and take a snapshot um, and let's peek back at what it was before. There's the brightness above his head and here's where it is now. Um, if this were actually going to make it into my client gallery I'd probably work on that a little bit better but already we recovered um, some highlights. So um, again if this were a client uh, gallery I would fix these blown out hot spots too by either using the clone tool or a combination of content aware fill and the clone tool and the patch tool. Uh, the patch tool basically preserves texture. The clone tool will um, repeat pixels uh, and content aware fill will have an, algor an algorithm. So, okay, so there you go. There is a, um, a pretty good, very quick uh, way that we saved it. I'm going to take another example so you can see. Um, sort of where we've come from. Here is this one here. I'm going to shrink this down uh, so you can compare it to um, all the other blown out ones just like it. Okay, thanks for stopping by.